Hello everyone, this is a follow-up slash response video to another one which I saw on Greg's Airplanes and Automobiles channel on YouTube just in the last couple of days. And Greg's video is showing in the background here at the moment. Greg's video is a demonstration of what's called pivotal altitude and his video is in IL2 and he is showing in this video that pivotal altitude has, in his opinion, been correctly modelled in IL2. Now pivotal altitude is the set altitude at which an aircraft can conduct a pylon turn for a given ground speed and there is a formula which is used to calculate what pivotal altitude is for any specific ground speed. In Greg's video he shows a number of interesting diagrams and screenshots and I will provide the source for where those diagrams come from. It's a published source which I also found online. The main bulk of the material is taken from the FAA handbook. The main source material that Greg uses in his video comes from the US Department of Transportation's um, FAA Airplane Flying Handbook. And the particular section which gives the formula for calculating pivotal altitude is as follows. It is height for the pivotal altitude is equal to your velocity squared if in miles per hour over 15 if you're looking for the height in feet. Now in his video Greg used metrics because he was flying a German airplane. He was using 220 kilometers per hour as his ground speed and he got to about 380 meters I think. I will be flying the Spitfire in this video and I'm going to be doing something very similar in DCS and I can convert Greg's figures for the Spitfire which would give me 136 miles per hour of ground speed and a pivotal altitude of 1,233 feet or I can select an airspeed which is a little bit easier to fly at in the Spitfire which would be 180 miles per hour and 2,160 feet. I have tried this maneuver a couple of times already and at 136 miles per hour it is incredibly difficult to maintain any kind of level turn in the Spitfire. So it's possible we will have to go with 180 miles per hour and a slightly higher altitude in order to make this work. One final thing we'll need to discuss briefly before conducting these tests is to look at where the lateral axis is in the Spitfire. And here's a diagram of the Spitfire, and you can see the datum point is basically directly in line with the wingtip, perhaps slightly forward of the wingtip. Now this is significantly ahead of where the pilot sits in this aircraft. The pilot sits closer to the wing root, so I will not actually be able to look directly down the line of that axis. So it's going to make conducting this test a little bit difficult because the pilot's head is not on top of the lateral axis. It is further noted also that adding weapons and things, changing the loadout of the Spitfire can bring the datum point or the center of gravity back in particular. I will be carrying some weapons on the wings so they may bring that center of gravity line back by just a fraction. This information here was sourced from the Spitfire Performance website. I'll provide a link to where I found that in the video description. Before I go and fly over to where I'm conducting the test, I just want to point out that I have the altimeter set to zero at airfield altitude. The airfield I'm at is needs or point, and this airfield is only about 20 feet or so above sea level. It's very close to sea level, so I can zero it here, and basically my altimeter is reading the same as above sea level. So we won't need to add any airfield altitude. We can read our altitude directly from the altimeter. So there is another way of attempting to do a pylon turn, and that is simply to conduct a coordinated turn at pivot altitude. Now for about 180 miles per hour, 
My pivot altitude is 2,200 feet. We already established that at the start of the video. So what I'm going to do is go into a left-hand coordinated turn, and it's much easier to do a coordinated turn in this aeroplane when you are looking forward, instead of when you're staring out over the wing like that. So I'm going to tip to the left, trim left, and I'm just going to try and maintain 180 miles per hour, or close to, in a left-hand turn with no change in altitude. Need the nose up just a little here, or oh, rather down, a little bit of right trim. Okay, that's about as close as I'm going to get. Now, I should be currently in a pylon turn. So if I look out over my left wing tip, that brown field there is not working as a pylon. And maybe that field there. Let's just see if we end up circling around that brown field there. Okay, I'm still holding 180. I'm still in the coordinated turn. I've just started descending there. I need to look for, I need to adjust. So it appears that that brown field there is operating as a pylon. So there you go. It is possible to do the pylon turn in the Spitfire in DCS. But the key is not to be looking out your window when you're doing it. It is in fact very difficult to maintain the coordination when you're not looking forward. Let's bring the nose up. And there we are, circling around that brown field just there. We've lost 200 feet of altitude, but it's pretty minimal. And we can gain that back. There's the brown field, still on the wingtip. And here we are, coordinated, 180 miles per hour, just below 2,000 feet. It's within Kui, and there's the brown field. So we can look out the window and see that we're still tracking that brown field. Getting a bit slow here, so we just allow the nose to drop. We're losing a bit of altitude, and that brown field is still there. So there's a pylon turn in the DCS Spitfire, and it's uh, not terribly difficult to do it, provided you enter a coordinated turn facing forward. I'd like to take a look at that turn now in tack view here, and we can actually look at my track around a fixed point on the ground. Um, here's me entering the turn, and there's me going through 180, and back around closest to 270 degrees. And you can see from the shape of the circle, it's not perfect, but it is basically circling around a point about where my cursor is. So it's not bad for a curve around a single geographic point on the map. Now the terrain was a little bit higher at that, at that point, but you can imagine that the, um, the brown field that we circled around uh, would have still worked had that been at sea level, which was a couple of hundred feet below the location where we went around in the circle. But my altimeter was set correctly for airfield altitude of zero, so it was reading the correct height above sea level. So similar to Greg's conclusions in his video, I think we can say with a relatively high level of confidence that if you achieve the pivotal altitude in DCS and conduct a coordinated turn at that altitude, you should therefore be conducting a pylon turn as demonstrated in this here video. So I think we can say that both IL-2 and DCS do a relatively good job of modeling this. For those who haven't tried DCS and haven't jumped in a warbird to have a look at this, I suggest uh, giving it a crack. And for those who haven't tried it in IL-2, I suggest uh, trying to repeat Greg's test yourself. It's always good airmanship to understand how these uh, various maneuvers work and to try and practice them yourself. As usual, everyone, thanks for watching, and I'll see you up in the skies.